National Gallery, we have so many paintings which represent the events of the Christmas season. Stars appear to the shepherds with its angels, and then particularly the guiding star that brings the kings to worship the Christ child. I think Carlo Dolci's Adoration of the Kings contains one of the most beautiful and absolutely blinding representations of a guiding star of all the paintings in the gallery. The star rises and the three kings see it as a sign of the fact that the Christ child has been born. And they follow the star to Bethlehem and the star comes to rest and comes to stop at the house where the Christ child has been born. Interestingly, a house and not a stable according to the gospel. They are wearing the richest possible garments, replete with embroidery, with fur, with gilded touches. You can't imagine anything more opulent except for the guiding star. And I think that just is the most striking thing about this painting. It's the biggest guiding star you've ever seen. We know that this particular subject had a significance for Dolce. He painted it on a number of occasions. And in this particular representation in the National Gallery, he includes his own portrait. And you see him behind the Magi also showing himself in adoration of the Christ child, drawn by that magnetic star. One particularly lovely star is in Jan Bruegel's Adoration of the Kings. If you look really closely at this magical little picture, it's possible to pick out a perfect six-pointed star surrounded in beautiful golden light that somehow manages in the night sky to reach down as far as the hay or straw roof of the stable and the loft of the stable itself. I think this painting would be the most perfect advent calendar. There's a lot of detail in this particular painting and in some ways it's not hard to imagine wise men travelling a long distance would have needed a star to find the right stable in this particular town because it's just so busy. In the painting of the Adoration of the Magi by Filippino Lippi, we have really quite an unusual scene because we have several things happening simultaneously to give a sense of continuous narrative. At the right-hand side of the painting, we see the Magi entering the scene on their journey from Jerusalem. You see them disappear behind the hill, and then they reappear again at the foreground of the painting where they kneel in devotion in front of the Virgin and Child. This is a landscape scene that is bathed in light, which means that the star might not be as dominant as it might first appear in other paintings which are set in more of a nocturnal scene. In many other images we might find a five or seven or eight pointed star, whereas here what we have is a star that looks more like a firework because it has its main star burst and then these smaller bursts going on below it. And then that star actually descends all the way down to the Virgin herself, creating this link between the Virgin and the heavens and denoting the idea that this is a child unlike any other because the Virgin herself has been blessed by God. Jan Gossart's Adoration of the Kings is a very large painting. It was made as an altarpiece for a church at the beginning of the 16th century. There is so much going on in it and there are some absolutely beautiful details. The dove is in Christian artwork seen as a symbol of the Holy Ghost. And below, of course, we have the Christ child, which raises all sorts of questions, particularly along the lines of, is this a depiction of the Trinity? Because we have Christ, we have the Holy Ghost, so therefore we also have the star. Does that star make a reference to God in this particular context? Stars illuminate the National Gallery from beginning to end. They're almost in every room. They can be in the night sky where you'd expect them to be. They can be on clothing and sometimes they're really hidden. But wherever they are, you can guarantee that there will be something really intriguing about the way that every artist who chooses to paint a star has gone about doing it.